so when when you were growing up, I mean, Vietnam yeah. is going on. My both brother, my brothers served uh, Vietnam. Yeah, both my, my both my brothers, um, and uh, obviously. You know, I had to make that decision, either graduate from college or, you know, go into Vietnam as an enlisted guy. But my father being a colonel and my other just said, look, um, you're not that this, I mean, you know, you were an enlisted man yourself. That's the hardest part. But in Vietnam, it's the NCOs that are the military and it's the NCOs that do the fighting and dying. Um, but uh, my father encouraged me to finish college and then go, if you, if you really want to go into the service, you know, then go in with your college degree. So I graduated in 1974, but the war was was over by then. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, my brother, from my father, I heard that I was going to go into Madison Avenue. So he was stationed here in San Diego on the USS Ranger and flew to New York City uh, and arranged for an officer candidate school test for me. And <clears throat> I did not participate <laughs> in this decision. So I was sitting at the kitchen table <laughs> And um, uh, my father goes, Ben, what do you want to tell your brother? You're going to take the test for officer candidate school tomorrow. <laughs> He's five years older. My father's looking at me. Okay. You know? So, uh, I mean, so I went down there. Now, keep in mind, I'm swimming. I got hair down to my shoulders back then. It's all bleach blonde from the chlorine. <laughs> and so, so I, go, I go down and I take the test, which are like the SATs. And um, I'm very deliberate actually slow. There were a lot of big words that I had to sound out in the test, you know? <laughs> and so uh, you, turn the, you turn the paper in, and uh, they graded the paper and debriefed the individual based on, uh, and I was one of the very last ones to finish. And it was a crummy office there in Manhattan. It was downtown Manhattan, right by City Hall. And all they had was little, little crummy office dividers that, you know, it's like 18 inches below, and it only goes up about four and a half feet. And they got folding chairs on the other side, and you could hear everything on the other side. So they're bringing him in, and the guy sits down. He says, well, you know, Mr. Smith, you could take the test again next year. Oh, gee, Mr. Brown, you could take the test again. So nobody was passed to the test. So up there, I said to my brother, I, I don't think I passed. He said, well, we'll see. So I go in, and I sit down, and the recruiters go, so, Joe, you want to join the Navy? No, man, I just took the test. <laughs> <laughs> my brother smacks me in the head. <laughs> he goes, you're joining the Navy. Okay. Uh, and they look, the recruiters are looking at me like, what do you want to do? Now, my brother was a supply corps officer. He wants to be a supply corps officer. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> so... They look at the score and they look at my brother. This is my brother's proudest moment. They go, your little brother didn't score high enough. He can't be a supply corps officer. So, and I said, well, what do you want to do? I mean, I, this this has only been about 15 hours. So I got the wheels turning. And um, now, back then, we were doing the Apollo recoveries. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, 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 uh, the, 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 this, the astronauts would land in the water. And sometimes the recovery carrier wasn't there. They had, so they had these B-roll human interest stories. So recently, there was a human interest story about the recovery. And there were two SEALs uh, you know, uh, and who were on the Olympic team. Now, I was not on the Olympic team, not at that caliber, but because they were, I knew of them. And one was in SEAL Team 1 and one was in UDT 13. And they did a, two, they did a human interest story on the SEALs. And now, keep in mind, Jocko, this is 1974. We have less than 800 people in the community. Nobody knows what it is. And um, they said, so what do you want to do? You know what I want to do? I want to be in UDT and SEAL team. <laughs> Give them a hard one, right? Mm-hmm. So the two of them, I mean, they're just looking like, what? Now, these guys were aviators and surface warfare guys. So they just turned to my brother. Um, they said, well, we'll be back. So now they went back for about 10 minutes. It was probably like, you know, buying a car where <laughs> I got to go talk to my manager. <laughs> <laughs> they go back 10 minutes later. They talk to my brother. And meanwhile, he's, he, my brother hasn't sat down. He's still standing over me. And I'm sitting in the chair because I was told to sit. Right? <laughs> and they turned to my brothers first, and they turned to me. They say, well, well, sorry, Joe, but there's no commission officers in UDT or SEAL team. 
And I <laughs> proceeded to tell him, that's BS, but I didn't say BS, right? <laughs> and of course, my brother smacks me in the head again. And he goes, Joe, they wouldn't lie to you. Now, here I'm a civilian, and I'm turning to my brother, and I go, they're recruiters. <laughs> that's what they do. You know? And they were lying. They actually. were lying to me, as you know. So uh, they, I wound up going to surface warfare to the USS Coronado, and I spent uh, you know time on that to become a surface warfare officer before I got to Coronado, California, to become a SEAL. And I will tell you this, that um, uh, the demanding life on board ship, by the time I got to Bud's training, I thought that was good duty. <laughs> and when guys were quitting, I was putting my arm around them and giving them a counseling <laughs> session. It's just like, you don't know what it's like out there. <laughs> Look, we got a mini mart down the street. <laughs> life is good. Uh, did, did you have to go to OCS? So did you go to OCS? I did. Is that what you did? I did. Yeah. And how was the how was that shock and awe experience? Uh, well, you know, you realize like in the first couple of days that you've been duped. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's five o'clock in the morning and they're waking you up and you got to be outside in five minutes and you're PT gear PTing. You know, come on. You know, yeah, yeah. so it, um, no, that was a great experience actually, um, and uh, it was the beginning. It was a tremendous maturation start for me to actually join the military, go to OCS, uh, have drill instructors uh, teaching you. They had expectations. They had standards. Uh, and then also, you know, you were measured and you had to live up to something. And um, uh, really, uh, uh, it was transformational for me. And um, uh, I wound up doing pretty well in OCS uh, and um, did well on board the ship. And um, you know when I got by the time I got to uh, you know Bud's class uh, ninety three, uh, we had the usual bit. You know we started off with one hundred and forty seven guys in the class, and finished with seventeen. And uh, I was standing there, and uh, you know be honest with you, Jocko, nobody but nobody was more surprised that I wound up being the honor man. Because I told Kathy I was married. Oh, you were the honor man. Oh yeah. But I mean, I, I told Kathy, I mean, we came back from San Clemente. She goes, how you doing? Oh, they're going to catch up to me this week. I know I'm going to get canned this week. You know, you just never know until you graduate. And when they announced who the honor man was, I was just kind of like, uh, it must be some mistake, you know. But yeah, so that w- that went, that was a great experience. As you know, Bud's, Bud's is a defining thing, and Hell Week is a defining thing for all of us. But the one thing about that is it all starts there. It all shapes it. And, you know, every one of us, whether you are the Admiral with his folks in Ramadi and Fallujah or the guys in Ramadi and Fallujah, whether you are the guy with stars in his collar or the guy with um, chevrons on his, his collar, we all wear the same warfare insignia. There is no difference between a SEAL officer and a SEAL enlisted man as far as what he had to do to earn that. Now, the career is different over the time, but it's one thing that we all understand it was the crucible. It's a defining thing, and you go through that, and um, you know it starts your journey. That doesn't really make you a seal. When you get your tried and pinned on you, that's your beginning of learning how to really become a seal. And it takes, and I'll tell you, till the day I took off my uniform, I learned every single day. And as as you know, the saying goes, you've got to earn it every single day. <laughs>